Hey guys, can everyone see my screen? Okay. All right. Just gonna check this really quickly. Don't mind my console logs. All right. So story time. I started learning how to code a little bit later in life, around 26 years old, but ever since I saw the values and the opportunities that it brought, I just began teaching anyone around me whatever I had already learned. So I started volunteering a lot after work for organizations like Girls Who Code, Flamingo Coders, Path to College, Code Art, and a ton more organizations. The thing is, is that I love to give back to my community in South Florida, and I wanna do whatever I can to ensure that our upcoming generations have the opportunities to grow meaningful careers in our region so they don't feel like they have to leave their support systems or the homes that they love in order to find success in life, which is something that we see quite a bit in our region and a lot of great people are working on this problem, but truthfully speaking, we are still growing and there's a lot of work to be done. So this is where my story begins with React Miami and how I used Next.js and Vercel to execute on the seemingly impossible vision of bringing a world-class developers conference to my home. My name is Michelle Bakels. I'm a software developer, community builder, and conference organizer. I work at G2i on creating initiatives to support the health of developers and connecting these developers to great companies. And I am an avid daydreamer. I excel in zoning out. And in 2020, I had a lot of time to zone out. And I just dreamt about what it would be like when we were all back together again. I looked up all of these web conferences around the world and dreamt about exploring a new city and meeting all of my Twitter friends in real life. <laughs> and shortly after this, the Miami tech seed started to blow up. And don't worry, I'm not gonna dig into this. This is just for context. But it was pretty bizarre, like super exciting obviously, but a little bit bizarre. There had been so many people for years that had been working on scaffolding a tech industry in South Florida, some for decades. And then all at once, it felt like the whole world was looking at us, which is fantastic. But then chaos ensued. And then there were all of these meetups and happy hours and conferences. Everybody was on Twitter. I'm headed to Miami. Who should I meet? It's like, OK, awesome. So we have all of these amazing tech events happening now. But what are we doing for developers? And there were a few initiatives going on, but I was like, we need a conference. We need a conference like the ones that I fly out to with the industry leading speakers and the deep learning opportunities and the amazing networking. We need that in Miami. And so in the most serendipitous moment ever, I see this tweet, someone should put on a React conference in Miami. And at the time I didn't work for Gabe, but now of course he's my boss at G2i. Um, and I was like, let's do it. Let's do this conference. But Gabe and I, we didn't have any conference organizing experience. So this is when G2i partnered officially with DevWorld and thus created React Miami. So now React Miami exists, yay. So now we just have to organize it, right? Like get some speakers, find some sponsors, sell some tickets. This was the rudest awakening of my life. It is extremely difficult to organize a conference. There are endless emails and contracts and contract revisions and calling people and calling them again. Okay, wait, this was supposed to be fun. I was gonna hang out with all my friends on the beach and just like talk about JSX or whatever. Now I am finding myself working on negative time with all of the dreams about what React Miami would be just evaporating in front of my face. When you're organizing a conference, you never know how long each contract or agreement or conversation is going to take to finalize and these are the most important things you have to focus on. So whenever you're not working on these things, you need to be making the best possible decisions with your given time anywhere you can be so that if a potential sponsor reaches out or the venue has to go back on something, if anything comes up immediately that you have to address, you don't want to be like, uh, can we talk about this later? I've had this course error for like two hours. Sorry, guys. <laughs> So this is why we unquestionably chose to build our site for React Miami with Next.js and Vercel, and it has been quite the journey organizing this conference. So let's start with year one. Year one is the hardest year to organize a conference because you have to sell tickets and get sponsorships without any precedence for your event. There are no tweets, testimonials, or videos online. And so the only thing anybody knows about your conference is whatever is on your website. So we needed to create a website. And this is when I realized I had never created a marketing website before. 
Okay, so next thing is that I wanted us to actually build our website. We were so early in our planning for React Miami that we had no idea what this was going to look like when it came to fruition. So I wanted us to build our site so that if we needed to pivot or change our implementation details, we weren't locked down in any way. And we also needed to utilize a CMS so that we could store our conference information and so that my co-organizer, Yos, he could go in and make edits to the site as well. And so again, this is another new thing. Hadn't ever used a CMS before, so lots of new things. But thankfully, I didn't have to start from scratch because there is an entire suite of free Next.js templates online for you to be able to use. So I found this one for the Virtual Event Starter Kit. When you use this kit, you get a whole application built out for you with about a dozen routes set up for events, fully responsive page layouts, type safety from front to back, a project set up in a CMS, that's fully templated as well, automatic builds and deployments set up in Vercel, and environment variables created and configured between all of these things. So if I were to do this on my own, it would probably have taken me a couple of weeks especially given all the other obligations that I had, but in reality, this was maybe two minutes of work with a few mouse clicks. And this is exactly the kind of time-saving decisions we had to be making wherever we could. So this gave us a great head start with a lot of well-written code and established application patterns that we could just continue following all the way up to conference day. So then conference day arrives and we sold out, which was wild, totally unexpected. But there were still a lot of challenges. And one of the biggest challenges is that I did a terrible job preparing volunteers and delegating work. <laughs> so I created this situation for myself in which I'm pulled in a thousand different directions. And there were some last minute items that I didn't get to. And one of those things was to build a page on our website for the after party, where people would RSVP, we send the headcount to the venue. And this was a need to have because the production team already made all of the slides with this URL and sent it to the AV team. And so in the midst of everything, I'm like, how am I going to build this page right now? My co-organizer had an idea. He would create everything in a Notion document, send me the link, and we would just set up a redirect in Next.js. Genius. OK, great. I actually had never done that before either. But it was OK because I happened to be at this React conference with hundreds of React developers around me. So I was sitting next to my friend Mark, and I was like, oh, Mark, I have to do this thing right now. And he's like, I actually already know how to do this thing. And so he's like, you just need these five lines of code. And then it's bloop, 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 minute lit and a half later, pages deployed, crisis averted, party on. So after that, I knew that Vercel and Next.js was going to be the stack for React Miami, because it didn't matter if I was getting a huge head start from zero or if I had to make a code change to our website under a ton of pressure day of the conference, there was always going to be an easily accessible, fast, and reliable solution at my reach. So year two. Year two, I worked off a refactored version of the virtual event template that I made for in-person events and continued my deployments on Vercel, of course. Um, but there were some things that were announced between these years that I was all over. So first. You may think that this is a picture of Jared Leto at a Gucci show. This is actually a picture of me at NextJSConf last year, seeing OG images being announced and then immediately using them for React Miami. This was amazing for our site because our site links could be shared anywhere and they would be fully customized and branded based on the route. So this is an example of our speaker cards from last year. We were able to put in this beautiful floral Miami design with the speaker information, what they do, our conference information. And without this, we would create these like Twitter or LinkedIn posts that would combine like text and link and image all together. But that messaging would only ever exist all together in that post. With OG images and being able to use this for React Miami, we could just share links or other people could share links and that messaging would still all be together with really impactful and customized information. So another thing was analytics was massive for React Miami. This is another announcement from last year, Vercel acquires Split B. That was a good business decision. Thank you so much for that. Let me go back to when I said I didn't have any time to do anything. Analytics was something that didn't get shipped in year one for React Miami, and that's so bad. But year two, 
We can install analytics in our project in just a couple of minutes, and it's like the world blossomed open. I could see where our site traffic was coming from, where in the world our visitors were, which routes they're hitting, how often they're hitting these routes. And this was really beneficial to us because the last year has been very, very hard for events. The economy hasn't been good. Companies weren't sending their developers to conferences as much. Marketing budgets, aka sponsorship budgets, were frozen. So we needed a lot of help, and analytics was a really great way to see what was important to our site visitors and help move that as close to the front of their experience as possible. It gave us the insight to do a speaker preview event as well. So we were originally going to announce our entire speaker lineup in January. Once we saw how many people were coming to our site and going directly to the speaker page first, we decided to put a preview together in November, and that's actually the moment that our ticket sales kicked off for the rest of the time leading up to the conference. So that is just something that was really, really huge for us that we wouldn't have gotten without this kind of insight from analytics. So now conference day arrives and we have another mini crisis again. I just finished organizing the Dev Health activities on the beach and I'm literally running through South Beach trying to get to the convention center before the queen of CSS herself, Una Kravets, is about to take the stage. And I get this text message that our stream is down. I still don't know what happened, but our streaming platform, it just wasn't gonna work. So I had to replace the stream minutes before this conference day was starting. So the MCs are going on stage and we need to replace the stream. So this is how this all went down. 8.57, I get this iframe in a WhatsApp message. And then at 9.01, I commit the code change, it gets pushed. 9.03, it's already deployed and live on our site. And at 9.05, a pre-scheduled tweet goes out to join the live stream for Yuna's talk. And it's like nothing happened. No one suspected a thing. Unless you happened to be in the room with me when I was making this code change, and you for sure knew something was wrong. <laughs> but aside from those people, it was seamless. So we had another really great year and uh, really happy with how it ended up in the end. Uh, after the conference, I wanted to fork this other Next.js template for the image gallery starter kit. And this is just a beautiful uh, gallery that I thought would be great to showcase our images from our photographer, Daniel Schutzmith. And so I start working on this gallery, and a week later, Fursell is like, we do databases and blobs now. And I was like, what, sick, okay. So what if this gallery was like full stack for sale? Like what does that even mean? So this was the stack. I used Vercel blob to store the images and I took those blob URLs, stored them in Vercel Postgres with additional image information like alt text, a few other things. The whole gallery is built with Next.js and it's deployed on Vercel, of course. So. Really straightforward, you grab the data from the database, populate the image gallery, it's deployed on Vercel, et voila, that's how web applications work and it worked like a charm. So another Next.js template win. Year three, our site for year three was just uh, deployed earlier this month and I decided to start it from scratch. There were a lot of new things that changed between year one and two that I wanted to take advantage of. And the first one was, uh, custom events from Vercel Analytics. So custom events allow you to set up tracking throughout your site uh, to see exactly what's being clicked on. And this can be set up with just a few keystrokes. So I set this up on every link and button in our entire website and I can see how often these things are being clicked, what areas of our site are getting the most traction and just drill down a little bit deeper into understanding how people are using our site. So going back to the speaker page example, it's not entirely clear how people are getting to this route, right? Are they going through the navigation bar? Are they coming from a Twitter post? Between custom events and analytics, I can be able to parse that information a little bit clearly and again, just understand deeper how people are engaging with our information in our site. I also used App Router this year. So, I personally prefer this directory layout because it, I like the co-location of functionality and resources to a route folder. You can also have things pulled out like in, into a components folder wherever necessary. Um, overall, everything just feels a little bit less reacty and less Next.js, which isn't a knock on either, obviously. Um, but you just see a lot less things, because everything's server-side rendered, you just see a lot less things like use effect hooks and get stack props. And 
with dynamic routes, you have uh, flexibility as well. So you can generate dynamic routes on demand by default, or you can generate several dynamic routes all together at build time with generate static params. OG images also got an upgrade. So there is a route handler now um, with the file convention open graph image where you can store the code for your OG images right into the route of the, the route that it belongs to, basically the page that it belongs to. Um, and so again, same thing. These are generated on demand by default for dynamic routes, or you can generate several of them all together with generate image metadata at build time. I also got to use AI quite a bit for the site this year. So number one, V0 from Vercel. This is an AI-powered UI generator. So you, you kind of describe what you want to build on a website uh, in, a t in a prompt box, and it will generate layouts for you that you can edit, and then you can copy that code and stick it right into your application. So got to ship some of that, and then also got to use Basehub, which is an AI-powered CMS backed by Basement. It uses the Vercel AI SDK under the hood, and this will generate your CMS templates and alt text for your images and a ton more things with AI. So very fun. These things were very beneficial to me to use, which brings me back to my intention from year one. I wanted us to actually build our website so that we could stay open to implementation ideas and integrations. Two years ago, I would have never guessed that I would build a website with an AI-powered CMS. But by using Next.js, our projects stay open to new ideas, future innovations, and possibilities. So there was a lot covered. And truthfully, this is really only scratching the surface of what we use from Next.js and Vercel for React Miami. When I started using Vercel, it was a platform for fast and simple deployments. And year over year, they've continued to deliver on their infrastructure and framework capabilities to provide that value of their deployments to more of the developer stack. And so when I think back on my intentions for React Miami and why we wanted this conference, it's not to build a website or to generate OG images or to have an image gallery. It's to bring the world of React together in some small way that reflects all the wonderful things about Miami and welcomes people to our community. It's also to connect our local tech industry to the global tech industry and help strengthen our region. I think we're off to a good start so far. So we are <laughs> living in a time where all of the leading options for building on the web are all unbelievably, ridiculously phenomenal. And so when you're choosing what you want to build with, think about what's important to you. What's important to me is that I build with a stack that's reliable, straightforward, and battle-tested. Something that makes me feel like I'm working with two or three more people on a project. Something that helps me make better implementation decisions around caching and performance and accessibility. But overall, as a software developer slash co conference organizer, the most important thing to me is that I'm not spending too much time developing at all. I evaluate what I give my energy to against a set of beliefs that I hold. Number one, I believe that creativity is a unique, irreplaceable quality of human life. I believe in eliminating mundane, repetitive, and tedious work to invite novelty. I believe that our goals and ambitions are pathways to emotions that we need to pursue and feel. And I believe in optimizing for your quality of life by balancing the work that brings you security with the life that brings you joy. So when you're deciding what you want to build with, what is important to you? For me, I look at who can deliver on the most important metric to me, and that is AFK, or the amount of time that I can spend away from my keyboard. <laughs> when inspiration strikes, how can I make sure that this vision sees the light of day? What's going to nurture my creativity, or help me achieve my goals, or support the balance between work and life. For me, this is why I choose the Vercel stack, and I encourage you to explore it further yourself. Thank you. Woo!